Mabel Story the Novel, Season 1, Sacred Tears. Written by Tatsumari Korisuno. Chapter 7, Part 1. Sunset. Ephania kept near Dane, easing him into peaceful sleep every night while listening to the cries of his heart. She didn't expect him to be healed and return her feelings all within the same week. She could peer into the future and find when that point would be, but it would be more fulfilling, allowing time to pass and reach it together. Despite Ephania's kindness and comfort, the world felt duller than before to Dane. He began to wonder if he would ever thoroughly shake the darkness within him. The notes and discoveries made by him and Minadora pointed out that this small yet heavy feeling of distress in his heart should be gone or become smaller. But it was stubborn, even in the presence of Ephania's outward directed light. What's the matter, Dane? You have that look as though you can't understand something. Ephania smiled, standing behind him and massaging his shoulders. <sighs> There is a bit of a darkness within me that simply will not go away. Dane thrummed, rolling his head as the stress in his shoulders and neck began to melt. Perhaps there is a spot of darkness within everyone that won't go away no matter how much light is exposed to. You said that darkness is, and I quote, the wounds left behind by the trials and tribulations of life. Dane let out a deep breath as he leaned back in his chair. Even if that's the case, it should be diminishing. Dane answered flatly. Ephania draped her arms around his chest, resting her head on his. What if one's constant thoughts about the pain makes the darkness unable to dissipate? Similar to constantly picking a scab will never allow a flesh wound to heal. She suggested. Dane sighed. Ephania was right on some level, but there had to be a way to be rid of the darkness entirely. There had to be a way. Otherwise, there would be no way to help the world in the way he wanted. Even... I am not impervious to this darkness, Ephania said, her being panicking after she had spoken. Dane was taken aback. How could a goddess be affected by darkness? Was its power so terrible? If that were the case, the problem was much more widespread than he first thought. That can't be, Dane whispered, taking her hand from his chest and turning to look at her. Oh, but it can, Dane. Ephania sighed heavily, taking a step back. She would have to tell him what her darkness was, but it would cause him much more pain. Taking a long breath, she turned around and began. Many centuries before you were born, I lost interest in this world and its people and happenings. No matter what I did, the humans of Usoria would do what they wanted. Perhaps... I cared too much for those I watched and tried to steer away from a destructive path. But, as a result, I became very distant. Usoria passed by with little to no intervention on my part. Ephania paused, expecting Dane's expression to be that of anger, but she only saw a blank stare. As I said, my attention was drawn back to this world when your great circle collapsed and released all its contained energy. If I had been more attentive, I could have prevented the loss of Minadora, but my negligence led to that very moment. It is a weight that I carry. The only path that lies before me is seeking forgiveness from the one I hurt the most. Ephania drooped her delicate wings as Dane backed away from her, staring out through a window of vines overlooking the Aquanon Sea. This is the second time you mentioned Menador's death, and now you tell me her death could have been prevented? Dane growled, shadows gathering around him in a dark, gray haze. Ephania went to him, standing beside him as best she could to catch his peripheral vision. If I could go back and prevent such an act from happening without affecting the timeline so negatively, I would. You are the goddess of time, Ariel. As sure as I am standing here, you have the power to do just that. 
and yet you stand here in some pseudo body telling me that you can't? You had the power to prevent her loss and you did nothing! Dane roared, the shadows around him flowing out as a dark wind. Ephania clenched her jaw as a tear fell from her eye, power flowing from her being, pushing back against the shadows. When one has lived as long as I have, a time will come when even a goddess finds her care taken for granted. You humans are all the same! There are millions of people that I could have helped in the past! I can guarantee that every single one of them would come seething to my temple, begging for a reason as to why I didn't. All I can tell them is that my heart was broken too many times because I cared too much! Ephania threw her arms down, a surge of power exploding from her body, throwing Dane to the ground and into a pile of vines. She heard a loud crack from him, waking her from her furious rant to see Dane slumped on the floor. Covering her mouth with her hand, she moved to him when he pulled himself to his feet and looked up to her. Fear, understanding, grief, and anger settled across Dane's face. Such darkness residing within a goddess was something he had never considered. Regardless, it still hurt to know that Minodora's death was so preventable. With a grunt, Dane stood and stretched his back before walking to his staff. Dane, I am- Goodbye, Aphania, he said softly, picking up his staff and walking out of the circle with a limp, grabbing his freshly stocked knapsack. Aphania collapsed to her knees. What had she done? Had she pushed away from the one chance she had at redeeming herself? Had she just crushed the love she thought she was building? When Dane was out of sight, Ariel pulled her mind back, and her body fell limp within the clearing. Dane, meanwhile, pressed on to find the Great Tree of Heim. He didn't need healing, especially not from some pseudo-woman claiming to be a goddess, and certainly not one that let Minodora die. He needed to know how to get rid of the darkness once and for all. Three days went by before Dane crested a hill overlooking a vast, deep valley spanning as far as the eye could see. In the very center of the valley stood a tree reaching beyond the clouds, its branches covering nearly half the valley from where it stood. It took Dane another three days to get into the outermost branch's shade, where maple leaves the size of houses lay strewn across the ground in a sunset-colored sea. Another day passed before Dane stood at the very base of the tree, where a small town had been established, nestled between two of its titanic roots. The buildings used vines, wood, and fallen leaves of the tree they lived next to for pathways, ladders, and houses. Welcome to the city of Elyon, Traveler, a voice said, startling Dane out of his brooding concentration. The voice belonged to a young elven man wearing white garments adorned with gold, while a delicate chain hung from the tip of his ear to its lobe. Thank you, Dane replied shortly, continuing on his way towards the tree. Is there something that I can assist you with? The young man persisted. Dane sighed heavily, turning back to face him. Perhaps. I am searching for a way to speak with Haim. I hear that this tree is where he resides. The young man nodded and motioned towards a set of stairs carved into the bark, winding around the trunk. That stairway right there leads to a shrine within the center of the branches. You can direct your prayers to him there. It is said that prayers offered there are heard by him the best, the man stated. Dane nodded his understanding. A shrine to offer prayers wasn't what he was looking for. He wanted a direct conversation if deities existed at all though he had to admit his interaction with Ephania did encourage him to their existence. Perhaps you can stay the night and start your journey in the morning. The path to the top is a long one. Many have started, but few have finished, the man suggested. Looking to the horizon, it was the first time Dane noticed how long the shadows had grown as the sky began to cloak itself. Uh, I think that would be best, Dane whispered, taking note of the lights as they began to illuminate the streets, paths, and ladders of the city. The young man offered him directions to the nearest inn and gave him a parting blessing of well-traveling. Dane found the inn quickly enough, opening the door with enough force that it caught the attention of the few that were inside. 
Welcome to the Astral Gem. Are you seeking a room for the night? A woman's voice asked. The elfin woman at the reception podium gravitated his gaze to her. Dane chuckled nervously at his door blunder before responding. Uh, yes, I will. I apologize for opening the door with such force. <laughs> it's much lighter than it looks. The woman smiled as she reached for her inkwell and quill to sign the roster as she reached for a room key. <laughs> no need to fret. The door is made of featherwood. It happens more often than you would think. Once paying the fee, he gathered a simple meal and took it to his room. Branches and leaves decorated the walls and ceiling, giving the room a fairy-like atmosphere. Setting the food on the desk, he fell back onto the down-filled bed. So much weight on him. It felt as if he had been carrying a mountain. Once Minodora died, finding the answer to ridding the world of darkness became a burden. But people were counting on him, so he had to find a solution. Minodora, he whispered, draping his arm over his eyes. Thank you.